Business now from Stephen, starting with something a little bit different. We're going to talk about Lebanon, in fact. The uh, country's financial crisis is uh, worsening, Stephen. Lebanon is in the midst of a financial and economic crisis that the World Bank says is the worst the world has seen in 150 years. One of the big problems is the collapse of the Lebanese currency, the Lebanese pound. And as a result, dollars have become even more important to be able to pay for goods, particularly imports. But the country's also facing a shortage of dollars. In the latest twist, Lebanon Central Bank has suspended a special dollar exchange rate that it put in place to try and limit a run on people taking their dollars out of the banks. The system, which had been enforced since March of last year, meant that people who had dollars in their Lebanese bank accounts could make limited withdrawals at a rate of £3,900. That's much more than the official rate, which is just £1,500, but much, much less than what's called the parallel market rate, the rate that people are exchanging for outside of the banks, which is around £13,000. The absurdity of this whole system led people to dub this uh, rate put in place by the bank as lollars. Mm. Um, the, the bank exchange now gone. That rate has been suspended by the central bank. That's effectively seen people lose more than half of the value of their dollar deposits overnight. That led to even more queues at ATMs on Wednesdays. People tried to take out their money before this change came into force. Yeah, it's an incredible crisis, isn't it? I mean, the currency crisis having uh, all sorts of other effects on uh, people's lives as well. At a national level, a shortage of dollars means you can't buy imports. The central bank had been subsidising the purchase of essential imports, including medicines, but it's now asked the government to try and come up with the $1.3 billion that's already owed to medical suppliers. Hospitals are running short of medicines which has led to the cancellation of non-urgent surgeries situation getting worse by the day. The head of Lebanon's Pharmaceutical Importers Association saying that stocks of some drugs are likely to completely run out this month. Solange Mujan has more. When Mira Hasbini received word that her mother had fallen and needed surgery for a broken leg, the family's troubles normally would have ended there, but operating wasn't possible for a lack of medical supplies. It was a disaster. She was in a lot of pain. She's old, but she can say, give me medicine, she can take morphine. I don't know what we would have done if it had been a child. Such shortages are hitting Lebanon's health sector hard. It's not that vital supplies and medicine can't be ordered and imported, it's that the government currently cannot pay for them. They already owe $1.3 billion to foreign suppliers. A crisis compounded by political deadlock that's left the country without a government, and thus the ability to enact reforms and ask for international aid. The main problem is political. A government must be formed so we can get foreign aid. Without external support, we as a hospital sector cannot get back up on our feet. Lebanon is weathering one of the worst financial and economic crises of the past 150 years, according to the World Bank. A shortage of dollars is hurting imports of many essential goods, including fuel. There are daily 12-hour power outages. The central bank is so low on foreign cash, it's further tightening limits on all dollar account withdrawals. Inflation is rampant. The Lebanese pound has lost 85 percent of its value, pushing more than half of the population into poverty. Let's turn next to the US, which has threatened new tariffs over taxes on tax companies. That's right, Washington threatening tariffs on $2 billion worth of goods from India, Italy, Spain, Turkey, Austria and the UK because of their digital services taxes, which mainly target US companies. The measures have been suspended for six months pending ongoing talks on reform of the international taxation system. That puts these countries in the same position as France, which also had tariffs imposed over its digital tax before they were too were suspended. Finance ministers from the G7 large economies are meeting tomorrow to discuss plans, including a global minimum tax on big companies. Let's have a look at the uh, markets then, Stephen. European markets starting the day in the red. Not by very much, though. Shares in the French drinks maker Remy Cointreau booking the trend. They're up around 2% at the open after their latest financial results, showing continued strong demand for their premium alcohols. In Asia, there were gains on most of the main markets today as well. Investors digesting news from Japan that the government is considering extra help for the economy as the country sees another wave of coronavirus infections. Shanghai and Hong Kong, though, dipping into the red as trading goes on there.
Finally, from Stephen, more incentives. Could there be more incentives from uh, companies, this is, uh, for people to get vaccinated in the US? The brewer of Budweiser has pledged free beer for Americans if the United States can meet the target of 70% of adults getting at least one dose by July 4th. If that happens, Anhar Bush says that everyone over the legal drinking age of 21 will get a free beer, seltzer or non-alcoholic drink by uploading a photo of themselves at their favourite bar. It's the latest corporate partnership with the White House to try and boost vaccination rates, which have been slowing. Ride-hailing firms Uber and Lyft have been offering free trips to people going to and from their job appointments as well. Will it work if I send them one from here, do you think? Exactly, yeah. We can but hope, <laughs> but I suspect not. Stephen, thanks for much, Stephen Carroll with Business.